Here we got our Kinvest legend, Tasha Keeney on autonomous transportation. This one's a cracker, check it out. We're invested in a number of Chinese names. So in the robo taxi space, for example, we can just look at in the US, Waymo via Alphabet and Tesla, of course. And then in China, we have Baidu with their Apollo program and Pony. The biggest difference I would say, although we do find both markets interesting in the space, is price. So in China, the average ride hail price is much lower than the US. It's well below a dollar per mile equivalent. In the US, it's closer to around $2 per mile. Although China also has lower manufacturing costs, you could imagine that because this is such a large difference, that in terms of the opportunity and the profit opportunity, the US could be a more interesting market. The government has stepped in China for companies that have priced below that of average ride hail and actually asked them to have a minimum price so as not to exclude anyone from a job in the future is sort of the thought there. So again, both a ceiling and sort of a minimum price. So it's a little harder to be competitive there, at least in the early days when you're scaling, right? At scale, of course, we expect those costs to come down from today's levels. But in the early days, it's a tougher market. And then another big difference is, and then actually one more thing I'll say on that is because of that, we actually see a lot of the Chinese players looking to international expansion. So the Middle East provides a really interesting opportunity for these companies because the price ceiling is higher, as well as other countries that, again, just have higher average ride hail prices. So we think that's actually a big opportunity for them. And we see many of companies there focusing on that for that reason. And then on regulation, actually, surprisingly, the U.S., because our laws were set up on a, a state-by-state -state basis, the, both the testing and rollout of robotaxis has actually been a little bit more widespread. And when I say that, what I mean is the area that you're allowed to drive initially, you know, when you get a state approval is really anywhere on the state roads looking for commercial rollouts. It's like a city approval. You might start in a smaller portion of the city, but we've seen these companies be able to expand to citywide. In China, it's just a little bit more limited. These companies are typically only able to test in certain districts. We haven't seen it as widespread city rollout. Now, that said, it could be offset by volume here because there are just so many more people in China, of course. You want a really diverse data set when you're training your autonomous driving program. So that is a key difference. In the short term, the export restrictions could also affect Chinese players that are developing their own in-house AI training for autonomy, as well as the chips in the cars. Again, that's a short-term difference here. But again, I, I would say like overall, we find both of these markets really interesting. Again, high level, maybe the Chinese players might have more of an opportunity to capture like higher profit margins internationally. But we think both countries are very aggressively pursuing autonomous driving. And while it happened first in the US, we see China scale quickly again in terms of volume. So if you look at the two players that we think are the highest volume in terms of commercial rides, I believe the last data point for Waymo we have is around 250,000 rides per week as of April of this year. And then for Baidu, if you look at the second quarter data and extrapolate, it looks like it's around 170,000 rides per week. And that would be like around June. So again, in terms of the volume for the player that has the most commercial rides, the U.S. slightly ahead there. But given the size of the market in China, China, we could see that gap uh, close potentially. Chinese robo taxi companies are doing something that should be impossible, abandoning their massive home market of 1.4 billion people to chase opportunities in the Middle East instead. This isn't a bold international expansion strategy, it's a retreat. Government price controls have made it economically unviable to operate profitably in China, so companies like Baidu and Pony AI are apparently giving up on domestic dominance and going straight to Dubai and Riyadh where they can actually charge prices at work. This represents one of the most spectacular own goals in industrial policy history. China has spent billions building a domestic autonomous vehicle industry, then regulated it to international exile. Here's why Chinese robotaxis are becoming Middle Eastern companies and what that means for who wins the global race. Tasha notes that because of China's price constraints, we're actually seeing a lot of Chinese players looking to international expansion. She specifically mentions the Middle East providing a really interesting opportunity for these companies because the price ceiling is higher, as well as other countries that have a higher average ride hailing prices. To me, this strategic pivot reveals how badly China miscalculated with their robo-taxi price controls. The normal playbook for tech companies is dominate your home market first, use that cash flow and scale to perfect your product, and then expand internationally from a position of strength. 
Amazon owned the US before seriously pushing into Europe. Tesla sold domestically for years before going global. You build your motor home, then export that advantage. Chinese robo-taxi companies are doing the exact opposite. They're effectively conceding that they can't build profitable businesses in their home market of 1.4 billion people. So they're immediately pivoting to international markets where the economics actually work. The Middle East target makes perfect economic sense, even if it reveals strategic weakness. Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, and other Gulf states are wealthy markets with extremely high transportation costs, ambitious Vision 2030 technology goals, and governments actively seeking cutting edge solutions. A robot taxi ride that generates sub $1 per mile in Shanghai might generate three to $4 per mile in Dubai or Riyadh. That price difference is transformational. In China, operating sub $1 per mile with costs of around 60 to 70 cents per mile leaves tiny margins that make scaling brutally difficult. In Dubai, a $3 plus mile with similar costs and you're suddenly printing 60 to 70% gross margins. That's the difference between bleeding cash while scaling and generating profit from day one. Middle Eastern governments also have completely different incentives than China. They're not protecting millions of driver jobs because they don't have millions of drivers to protect. They're trying to diversify economics away from oil dependence towards technology and services. Autonomous vehicles fit perfectly into that vision. It's futuristic, attracts investment, and positions them as tech leaders. No price controls, no job protection mandates, just pure market economics where the highest quality service at competitive prices wins. The political risk is lower too. Chinese companies operating in the Middle East don't face the same government interference they do at home. UAE isn't going to suddenly impose price floors to protect jobs that don't exist. Saudi Arabia wants autonomous vehicles to succeed because it advances their modernization narrative. That regulatory stability is worth enormous amounts when you're making billion dollar deployment decisions. But here's where this gets strategically problematic for Chinese companies. International expansion from a position of weakness is vastly harder than expansion from strength. When Tesla entered China, they came with a proven product, dominant US market share, and years of manufacturing experience. They could point to the success at home and say, we'll just replicate that here. Chinese robo-taxi companies entering the Middle East in 2025 and 2026 are coming without proven profitability anywhere, without dominant market share in their home country, and while still losing money trying to scale. Their pitch is, we can't make this work in China because of regulations, but we promise we'll make it work here. That's not a compelling story for governments deciding which companies to back. The timeline disadvantage compounds brutally. While Chinese companies spend 2025 to 2027 trying to cobble together profitable operations across scattered international markets in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Riyadh, US companies are dominating their entire domestic market. Waymo and Tesla are operating in multiple major American cities, generating massive amounts of diverse training data, achieving economies of scale, and most importantly, printing reasonable dollar per mile cash rates. By 2028, when both Chinese and US companies want to expand globally, the capability gap will be enormous. US companies will have better AI trained on more diverse data from operating across radically different environments. They'll have more capital from years of profitable domestic operations. They'll have operational expertise deploying and managing fleets at scale. They'll have brand recognition from serving millions of customers successfully. Chinese companies will have some modest operation in a few Middle Eastern cities with economics that only works because prices are artificially high. That's not a foundation for global dominance. That's a niche position serving wealthy markets that tolerate premium pricing. Most people pour money into ads people ignore. YouTube changes that, it builds trust, authority, and a real connection at scale. One law firm we worked with landed 33 clients in just five months worth $330,000 from their YouTube channel. If you run a business, this is one of the most overlooked opportunities right now. Book a call with me below and I can show you how we can make it happen.